Hi guys, Graeme here again from Bainbridge Technologies. Um, today I'd just like to give you a quick uh, rundown and a bit of tech uh, advice and uh, on how to charge our lithium power top. Now, this one I'm using today is the one that's got the um, DC to DC built in that you can charge uh, such as this way why this plug that comes with it and you can plug it into a source that you know that you can supply 20 amp load uh, on. If not, you would unplug this one and you use the other lead that comes with it that's got the cigarette lighter on it <clears throat> and you plug that into it which has only got the two connections, the blue and the black, and then it would plug into a cigarette lighter uh, which is capable of 10 amp supply. But for today's purposes, I'll just show you this because I'm running it all off of the, uh, off the desktop power supply here. So ultimately, you've got a lithium battery, a 50 amp charger in here, and um, you know a 20, a 20 amp charger or so, or anything up to a 20 amp charger is, uh, is more than enough to, to keep this thing topped up. Um, but at the same time, we package it with these um, Victron 5 amp lithium, uh, well chargers which are capable of lithium, which I'll show you how to set that up. And um, so you can charge your AC when it's at home before you go out. And then whilst if you are on the road for a long weekend or you're going for a bit of a drive, you can have the dedicated 20 amp or if not, and you don't have that, you can then plug it into your cigarette lighter and, and charge it that way. And we're also going to take it outside and I'll show you how to charge it via solar as well. So firstly, whilst you're at home, what we'll do is we'll set the phone up and, uh, and the charger. Now I'll plug the charger in and supply it power and uh, once it's supplied with power you'll notice that it will um, the, the blue light and the little orangey light will come on as well. Now once you've downloaded your app you download the um, Victron Connect app which is this app here the Victron Connect which you can download from either the uh, Android Auto uh, or Google uh, for Android Auto um, and also from the App Store for iPhone. So I'll go into device. Now, um, you'll notice on here that it's showing the smart shunt, but it's not showing that. That doesn't mean that it's not there. It's because the last device I was connected to was the smart shunt. So what you've got to do is either hit this or drag this down or, or hit the... Um, refresh and now you'll notice it'll find it. I get a lot of people ringing up and go, it doesn't find my equipment. Just because you plugged in and turned on the device doesn't mean it automatically will be there. You have to search for the device. So we want that device. Yes, we do. Now let's connect to it. Um, generally it will ask you to put in the code or, or change the code. The standard code is six zero. So one, two, three, four, five, six pair. and now it will pair the device. So doing it this way, it's already up and running. I can go into settings now and actually turn this to Bluetooth or um, you can um, just use the buttons and circulate through the, the device here to go through the different, um, so hit the mode button and it will show you lithium ion, AGM high, AGM normal or lithium ion. But as I said, once I go into my Bluetooth app here, I can actually go into the, the settings and you'll see it's now on lithium ion and it's set as a five amp charger. If I had a really small battery for say a um, jet ski or motorbike or something, you could turn that down to the two and it will just charge it at two amps, which is not too much then for a smaller battery. But we'll leave that on five, leave it on lithium. That's set now, so that's ready to go to plug into the charger. So what I'll just do is I'll make sure that I turn the device off. Always turn the safety device off when you're plugging and unplugging different connectors. And with the connector, we modify and make up a new lead for you with an Anderson plug on it. So now what we'll do is we will plug this into here. It will click in, locks in. And you can pick any one of these ports, all three of these uh, Anderson plugs are directly across the battery. So they can be used to put power in and take power out. At the same time, simultaneously, whatever, they are all the same. So for this purpose, I will plug it into the bottom one. Then I'll turn the power back on, on the charger. You'll see that it will start going and it will start flashing. That's just telling you that it's linking up and searching for your Bluetooth device and it is now charging in the bulk mode, which it is, but on your Bluetooth device, it's telling me the battery voltage is at 14.2 volts 
and it's charging at 4.5, 4.1 .4 amps now. Because this battery is pretty much fully charged, you'll notice this will just gradually go down and down and down very quickly because it's nearly at that full charge mark. So 14.2 um, volts uh, charging is maximum charge for lithium battery and 13.5 um, and is anywhere, anything from 13.5 is 100% uh, on this battery so um, we can go into this now let's just see uh, what we've got in here battery connect advanced settings we can go into advanced settings uh, okay and under advanced settings it will give you separate battery settings which you can then go in and you can change your absorption voltage you can change your battery preset. So obviously because we put it into a lithium ion charger, it obviously knows that it's a lithium ion battery. So, um, so therefore then you know that all those settings are correct. So just make sure that if you are connecting it to a normal AGM gel or a lead acid battery that you just go back to the normal settings and take it off of uh, off a lithium ion. So that's quite simply how that works. Um, and by having it this way, it'll tell you once it's down, once you see the current down to zero, you know that that battery is fully charged. Lithium ion batteries, and for this size, usually only take a few hours. If this was 100% dead flat off of this, you'd be looking um, probably sort of maybe an overnight charge, but by the morning, just turn it off because it will be, or if it hasn't turned itself off anyway, it'll be, uh, it'll be fully, fully charged. As you can see now, it's actually down to 0.7 of an amp already. So it's basically gonna be turning over to uh, storage mode very, very quickly. So that's how you charge it via the, um, the AC. Let's turn that off. Okay, secondly, to show you how to charge from the DC to DC, this stage is of replicating your alternator in your vehicle from the 20 amp load. So what we'll do is we'll have, we'll plug this unit in here, which is the 20 amp circuit, which is replicating being plugged into your 20 amp circuit in your car. Now, as you notice, 12.5 volts. So in the top here, there's a little green uh, indicator light um, and it will write, light up really bright when it tells you that the actual charge is on. So you'll notice if you look in there, that'll get really bright green once this voltage goes above 13.2. You see green lights come on. It's weighing straight up to like 18 volts, uh, sorry, 18 amps. But because this battery is basically 100%, the charger in here is sort of saying, well, mate, we don't need to be putting any power in there. So the amps, it's just dropping down. It started off at 18 because it's a 20 amp charger. Um, it saw that we're, because we're up around that 13, high 13 volt mark, um, the battery in this, because I was charging it before via the, the DC to DC, AC to DC charger, I should say, and it was pretty much nearly up to 100%. Uh, the voltage and the amps, um, the amps will start decreasing. Usually when a battery is fully charged, the voltage will go up and the amps going into it will decrease. So it's only pulling around three amps there at the moment, uh, which it will gradually just get to the point where it will turn off, complete, turn off completely. But that's simply how you do that from that. And as I said, if it was the cigarette lighter one, you would just plug it in, which would just be the blue and the, and the black, and then it would just plug into your cigarette lighter. So that's it for charging that one now. Um, as you can see, it's still charging, that green light's still on nice and bright. And uh, what we'll do is I'll take you outside, we'll plug the solar in and charge it via the solar and show you how that works. So see you back shortly. Hi guys, a little bit of a change of plan. I said I know I, I, when I was back we'd see you outside, but we went outside and while we've been here videoing, the clouds have come over, it's raining and whatever. So ultimately, what I wanted to show you was, we've obviously showed you the, the two methods so far by charging via the uh, DC to DC. Um, so that's, that's one option. You've then we've also showed you the charging of the, uh, the AC charger via plugging into the Anderson plug, charging through the AC charger no problems at all. And thirdly, the other option is charging via solar. So just using, um, well ultimately we would have been using the 120 watt uh, blanket outside, but basically what, as I explained earlier on, these three Anderson plugs here are uh, all connected to the battery cells inside at the same place. So they're, they're common um, directly across the battery cells. So they're an input and an output at the same time. So you can have solar going in. At, at the moment, this plug here is for the fridge uh, and it's running the fridge, no problems at all. Now, what I was 
uh, like to do is show you. So what we do is when you plug the solar controller in for the first time, you need to make sure that you plug it into the battery first anyway. So then it knows what mode to put the, the battery charging um, circuit into. The main reason because these are a 1224 charger. So obviously plugging into 12 volt, it needs to be charging in the 12 volt um, area. So um, all the algorithms for the charger for that. So you plug that into there. It also tells me it's 13.5 volts, which is actually the battery voltage, which means it's at 100%. Um, and therefore then the only other connection I would then need to make is from the solar blanket. Out of the solar blanket, it has a red uh, Anderson plug because it's raw, so it's a raw. Uh, all different colored Andersons won't plug into each other. So the raw power means it's anywhere from like 18 to 20 odd volts and you don't want to go plugging that into the 12 volts because you'll have a, a bit of a spark and an arc and a bit of shock. Um, so yeah, so the blanket itself, as I said, has a red Anderson plug. Also inside the blanket, uh, well, this particular blanket then comes with a five meter extension lead, which has got a red Anderson to plug into the solar blanket. And then on the other end, there's a red Anderson to plug into that so that you can have all this near your campsite or at, in the back of your car, but uh, which can be under the shade. And then you run the solar panel uh, and the blanket out in the sun. So you keep that out in the sun and keep this in the shade. And, uh, and that's quite simply it. And then it will come up and will show you the actual wattage and the amps that the solar is producing and how many amps are going into the battery via the solar. And there's a couple of little uh, USB sockets you can charge via the solar charger there as well. But obviously you can do that straight off of uh, the unit here as well. So that's, that's simply it. So at the same time, we've got solar going in and we've got our loads like the fridge and everything connected and going out. So that's, that's all you need to do. Um, you can have the solar going in at the same time, no problems at all. So we'll just pull that out and uh, go from there. So realistically, at the end of the day, that's all you need to do for your charging of uh, this particular power top. That's got all three uh, of those things covered. Now, if you did buy the one that doesn't have the inbuilt DC to DC, you can still use the other two options for charging, obviously, plugging in via the AC into one of the Anderson plugs and or whilst you're out on the road uh, or at your campsites, you can plug the solar in via the solar regulator and charge it as well. So it's just that the, uh, the DC gives you that extra little bit of uh, charging whilst you are driving if you're on a long trip or you're, you're traveling around for a period of time from spot to spot. Otherwise, um, that's all your modes covered for charging. So until next time, if you've got any questions, please uh, drop us a note and we'll uh, get around to them. Uh, otherwise, have a look at the rest of the series of the how-tos and uh, happy camping. See you next time. Bye for now.